There are twelve dimensions of Naga. There is a four hundred meter long serpent mound. Wherever Pratyahara happened, there Naga lived. Your Adishesha has to begin to uncoil and move if you want to know aspects beyond five senses. Where the five senses fail, there the work of the Naga begins. There are twelve dimensions of Naga which are worshipped in India. These are called Ananta, Vasuki, Shesha, Padma, Kambala, Karkotaka, Ashwatara, Dhritarashtra, Sankapala, Kaliya, Takshaka and Pingala. These are the twelve aspects. These twelve aspects also relate to the twelve aspects of the calendar, the twelve aspects of the, the stars and stuff that people read. In various cultures, literally across the world, you see symbolisms, proof, symbolic proof. From twenty thousand years onwards, you will see various artifacts around the world showing how snake played an important part in their mystical journey of those tribes in variety of places from Russia to China, of course India, Africa, Egypt, Greece, South America, North America, everywhere you have serpent symbolism representing this. And uh, in North America we discovered there is a four hundred meter long serpent mound in Ohio, four hundred meters long, overlooking a, a very big crater which could have happened either because of an asteroid hit or maybe a gas burst, they are saying, we do not know how it happened. But a four hundred meter long serpent built with mud, uh, a mound, it's a serpent mound. So, various people across the world have come to this, not by transportation of cultures, that also has happened, but that is not the reason why it's happened. Wherever people perceived something beyond five senses, wherever people spent time, more eyes closed, pratyahara essentially. Pratyahara means you withdrew your senses. Wherever pratyahara happened, wherever withdrawal of sense happened, there Naga lived, there they recognized the significance of this dimension of evolutionary uh, residue which remains within us and how we can activate that and how it can become a process of one's evolution beyond the limitations of one's senses. The snake which is uh, around uh, Shiva's throat, is uh, referred to as Vasuki. But the Vishnu's snake is referred to as Shesha. If you do not know this, those of you who learnt uh, early part of your school, you did in local languages in southern India. If you did, either in… I do not know what's the word in Tamil, but in uh, Telugu and Kannada, if you're learning mathematics, shesha means remainder. In mathematics, it's a common thing, shesha. So that is the word that is used for this, because this snake or this serpent represents the shesha or what is always a remainder of when… when a certain creation ends, certain things remain. A certain core aspect remains, which once again germinates into another creation. So it is upon this shesha that Vishnu rests. That means when he is resting, when there is no creation to maintain, he is resting on shesha, what is remainder. Adi shesha uncoils and time moves forward. This is the 
mythology about it. This means the, sh the remainder that is left from the previous creation stays and when it begins to uncoil, it is called as Adi Shesha because it's the first reminder, reminder which is there and it uncoils means another creation begins to happen. So this is a very profound aspect of life ex expressed in symbolic ways. So this Nagara Panchami or Naga Panchami today represents all this on the Shri in the month of Shravana on the day, fifth day, this is the day which is very significant for those who want to penetrate and know life beyond their physicality, beyond their senses. This is not just about experiencing or realization or liberation, this is about knowing, if you want to know. Maybe not everybody wishes to know, that is okay. Some people just want to be free, they don't care to know, it's all right. But those who want to know, for them, this aspect of evolutionary reminder within you is very, very important. Otherwise, it doesn't really function whether you actually relate to the symbolism or not, but you have to invigorate that dimension. Your Adi Shesha has to begin to uncoil and move. If you want to know aspects beyond five senses, aspects beyond physical nature, the Naga represents that dimension which cannot be perceived by the senses. It is because of that in the yogic culture, maximum attention was given to Naga. Well, Adi Yogi is carrying a Naga around his uh, throat because this represents that aspect of you where you're able to perceive something which your senses cannot perceive. Where the five senses fail, there the work of the Naga begins.